Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? The Saints beat the Bucks on Sunday, 23-13, and Derek Carr had a very efficient day in that game. And um, he was 24-32, 197 yards, couple of touchdowns, no interceptions, had a QBR of 88.9, his rating of 111.1. That's the kind of day that you need from Derek Carr. I don't need Derek Carr to go throw for 400. I don't need the emperor. Uh, what I need is the guy. You go ahead, hit it. Why not? Let's start it. Let's. Yeah. On your feet, Paulie. Show some respect to His Highness. Um, but the Emperor on Sunday, he was not. He was he was efficient and he was good and exactly what the Saints needed. And the Saints are three and one in their last four. And in those four games uh, across that span, Derek Carr has thrown for 853 yards, 10 touchdowns, just two picks. That's over the last four games. So half an interception and um, more than two touchdowns per game on average. Two and a half touchdowns and a half an interception. He's been efficient and good over that stretch. Dennis Allen kind of gave a little bit of an opinion as to why. Hey, I think he's feeling a little bit better. <clears throat> you know, I mean, obviously he's had a couple of, you know, things that have kind of nagged him throughout the, you know, throughout the season. And I think he's probably, look, nobody's 100% healthy this time of year, but I think he's closer to that now than maybe where he was, you know, a month, month and a half ago. So, yeah, I think he's, I think he's been performing, you know, much better over the last, you know, call it month or six weeks of the season. And I think a lot of that is health related. I think that's a completely legitimate, salient argument. I I'm not even going to rip that apart. I remember back in 2010, um, the year after the Super Bowl. Only after that season did we learn that Drew Brees was dealing with a, a damaged, was playing with a damaged MCL. Uh, there was the year Brees had the oblique injury that we didn't know. A lot of times people are talking about Brees always losing his touch or his, his arm strength downfield. Now, late in his career, that was obviously a problem. But I'm talking, you know, in, in that 10, 11, 12 range where Brees was dealing with injuries we didn't know about until after the season. Now, we know Derek Carr had the sprained AC joint. He's he, He's been concussed a couple of times. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think being healthy clearly is going to help you play better. The other part of it is you played Carolina, the Giants, the Rams, and the Bucks. Uh, Carolina's 2-14. and 14, The Giants are 5-11. and 11, The Rams are 9-7. and seven, It's the only team with a winning record. And then Tampa's 8-8. Eight and eight. So it helps that you played a bunch of average to bad football teams. Now, for what it's worth, of all those teams, the best defensive team you played was Carolina. I don't know if you know this, but Carolina is third in the NFL in total defense. Now, maybe that's in part because a lot of teams just don't need to do much because Carolina can't score. But Carolina is third in total defense. The Rams are 19th. The Bucks are 25th. And the Giants are 28th. So you also played a lot of bad teams. The best team you played, the Rams... That was a pretty terrible day for Derek Carr. Remember, you beat the Giants, and that's when Dennis Allen stood at the podium and said that since none of you are going to ask me about it, I think the quarterback played pretty well today. Well, a week later, you go out to the West Coast, you play the Rams, who's the best team of this four-game stretch, and that was a true emperor of empty yards game where you were down 30-7 to in the fourth quarter, and you rallied with two late touchdown drives to make it look better, and you look at the final stat line of 319 yards, three touchdowns, and a pick, and you go, well, wasn't Derek Carr's fault. Yeah, it was. He was terrible that day, and the Rams basically had it in the bag, and then the emperor of empty yards did what he does, and he threw for a lot of yards late. You don't stand for his highness, Polly. Off with your head! Anyway, um, but as I've said with Derek Carr, I will give credit where credit's due and praise when it's warranted and criticism when it's warranted. And Derek Carr on Sunday against the Rams, excuse me, Derek Carr on Sunday against the Bucks was efficient and good. If you could get that performance from Derek Carr 17 times, you've won this division already going away. The problem is you don't get that every week. And I'm not going to say that health isn't a factor because I think it is. I think that that's a very legitimate point that Dennis Allen made. 
it's also it's also a four game sample in a ten year career, and this is the point that I have made. Will continue to make about Derek Carr. There are absolutely going to be days where he plays very well because he's a talented, capable guy who's played a lot of football. And yes, there's going to be days where Derek Carr goes out there and spins it and looks good. But there's also going to be days that look like he did against the Rams. And this is the the definition. It's been the point I've made all season. This is the definition of a bad football team. A bad football team is an inconsistent football team. Or an inconsistent football team is a bad football team. However you want to say it. Chicken or the egg. But this is, I mean, the Saints went win-win, loss-loss, win, loss-loss, win-win, loss-loss-loss, win-win, loss-win. Bad football teams don't consistently consistently string together wins. And that's been Derek Carr's MO his entire career as a starting quarterback. So, yes, you can zoom into this four-game sample and say, man, he's looked pretty good this last month. And he has, with the exception of the game against the Rams, who incidentally is the best team you played. But he has looked good the last month. But now pull out and look at the big picture, and you could say, yeah, that was good, but I got a 10-year sample that tells me what he is which is an average quarterback. I mean, ask yourself this. Do you believe Derek Carr is a championship quarterback? You know the answer to that question. It's okay to be honest. And by the way, whenever I say this, most of the pushback I get is, man, but it ain't just Derek Carr. And you're right. You're right. I'm conceding that to you. This team has issues that are far beyond Derek Carr. Dennis Allen... Not a good head coach. I think I've been pretty clear in that criticism. You don't you don't have to wonder where I stand on Dennis Allen as a head coach. Great defensive coordinator, terrible head football coach. Pete Carmichael, man, he stinks. It's a play calling. Yes, yes. Sneaky Pete has had a really rough year. It's not gone well. Objectively true. Man, but they're old. Yes, they're the oldest roster in the NFL. All of that is very true. Some of you talk about the terrible offensive line. What if I told you that the Saints have actually allowed the second fewest sacks this season? Would you believe me? The 49ers have allowed 31 sacks this year. The Saints have allowed 32. Second fewest number of sacks allowed in the NFL this year. So that's one where perception don't exactly jive with reality. The offensive line, at least in pass protection, has been much better this year than what the perception is. But all that can be true. The two are not mutually exclusive. This team can be flawed and have a lot of issues, which it does. And Derek Carr can still be an average at best quarterback, which a 10-year sample size has shown us. For whatever it's worth, there was a new study out. This popped up in my inbox today. Um... One of the gambling websites graded the uh, the head coaches in the NFL based on a variety of factors. Um, winning percentage, average division, finish, a lot of different variables as well. And the least successful head coach in the NFL. Fifth least effective, Todd Bowles, Matt Eberflus, Jonathan Gannon, Mike McDaniel, incidentally, second least effective head coach. And number one on the list, the least effective head coach in the NFL, Dennis Allen. It's an objective metric. I'm with you. Dennis Allen's not a good coach. But you can acknowledge as well what Derek Carr is. They're going to run it back, though. certainly looks like it. Report from CBS over the weekend. Looks like Derek Carr and Dennis Allen will be back. Now, barring something dramatically unforeseen, they'll probably make a change at OC with Pete Carmichael. And uh, we'll just live in this perpetual state of mediocrity for another season before hopefully this this organization will make a change. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.